Let's jumpstart those brainwaves. My dear Miss Ross, welcome back. There are two guards right outside. You don't have to worry. I'm not angry with you, not anymore. What do you want? It's over for me now, I know that. And soon it'll be over for Bruce. That's why I've come to you, to ask you if you could persuade your father, as a man, as a father himself, that if I turn myself in now, peacefully, and before he puts me away forever, that he would let me see my son for one last time. Could you do that for me? It's out of my father's hands now. I understand. He's a puppet now. I don't blame him. You shouldn't. You should blame yourself for what you've done to your son. And what have I done to my son, Miss Ross? Nothing. I tried to improve on the limits in myself. Myself, not him. Can you understand? To improve on nature, my nature, knowledge of oneself. It's the only path to the truth that give men the power to go beyond God's boundaries. You know what's beyond your boundaries? Other people. All you've given Bruce is fear. Fear of life. Fear. Perhaps, Miss Mons. And loneliness, too. Yes. I feel. But I have lived completely once. I was so much in love. And she so much wanted a baby. My baby. I could tell from the moment she conceived that it wasn't a son I had given her, but something else. A monster, maybe. I should have put a stop to it right then. But I was curious. And that was my downfall. And as I watched his tiny life unfold, I began to imagine the horror of it. And my curiosity was replaced with compassion. But they took away my chance to cure him. Your father threw me out. I remember the day so well. Every moment, every sensation, walking into the house, the feeling of the handle of the knife in my hand. I knew I was doing a father's work, fulfilling a father's mercy. But then she surprised me. It was as if she and the knife merged. No! You cannot imagine the unbearable finality of it. And in that one moment, I took everything that was dear to me and transformed it into nothing more than a memory. 